Praise the Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord, Father in heaven. Thank you, Father, for your touch, for your presence, O oh Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. What can you continue to do, God? Be in our side in this Bible study where we're going to have, O oh Lord. Go before us, O oh Lord. Let your truths come forth, O oh Lord. We fall into the good ground, God, to produce fruits. We are so thankful once more to have you in this. Thursday night Bible study. We want to get right into it, right into the word of God. And if we want to place a subject on our Bible study tonight, it's called the time of healing or time for healing. And we want to go right there into Lumbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. We want to read this story here about Miriam, Aaron, and, and Moses here. It was an important event that happened here. While reading, something caught my attention that I'd never seen before. like to share with you guys and ladies. If I can get there. Okay, Roman numbers in chapter 12. We gonna start on verse four. But to understand what was going on here, there were a dispute between Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. They had done great exploits together. They had crossed the Red Sea. They did all of this together. But now it became a, a, a problem, a tug of war between uh, Moses and his siblings, right? At first, they were not happy with the wife that Moses had married, the uh, Ethiopian. They were not happy with that. And they were not happy that Moses was the only one that God would speak to, to speak to the people. They wanted to uh, 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 assume authority also. They felt that they were equal what Moses to get you caught up onto. So we're gonna start here on verse four and it says, the Lord spoke, Lumber chapter 12, verse four. The Lord spoke suddenly unto Moses and to Aaron and to Miriam, come out ye, you three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. In verse five, the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood at the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known to him in a vision and will speak to him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. He is faithful in all his house. Verse eight, with him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently not in dark speeches and similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Where then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And verse nine, the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed. The cloud departed, verse 10, from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. Aaron looked unto Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, My Lord, I beseech you, lay not sin unto us, wherefore we have done foolishly, wherein we have sinned. Verse 12, let her not be one dead whom the flesh is half consumed when he come out of his mother's womb. Verse 13, 
when Moses heard this and he was looking on his sister, Moses cried out to the Lord, heal her thou, O God, I beseech thee. In verse 14, the Lord said unto Moses, if her father had but spit on her face, should she not be ashamed for seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days. And after, let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out of the camp for seven days and the people journeyed not until Miriam was brought in again. And afterwards, the people removed from Hazroth and pitched in the wilderness of, of Paran. Those two words are very important for us to understand what was going on here. I want to point out a couple of things that what's going on right here. And it says, verse 15, Miriam was shut out of the camp for seven days and the people journeyed not until Miriam was brought in. The important part of this to get this in verse 15, there is a time of healing and the time is now. The people of God, or you want to call the church of God, has been stagnant. There has not been any movement. We've been standing still. Right? Nothing has been really going on. God, the move of God has not been moving on the church because of the position the church is in right now. No movement, right? Being stagnant, right? This is not the picture what God has called his people out. God has called his people out to be a royal preset through good works that others will see and to glorify the God. How can the other people who's looking unto the church glorify God when they see all this foolishness was going on, all this division, all this strife, right? The place where they was at, at Hasroth, it's an enclosed place, right? It's encampment, sex. Every, every group, right? There is respecters of persons, all kind of things is going on when God's people is separated. But we know, like the saints come, where is uh, unity? The people are strong. But where is division? The people are weak. Right? So right here in verse 15, we see the need of healing. Miriam was to stay out of the camp for seven days. There's been those amongst us that have been out of church for seven years, 27, 30 years, 40 years, because of hurts in the church, of things they've seen in the church, right? And certain things, it be because of the person themselves has caused on themselves, right? Sickness and disease. But it, all of this is going on in the house of God. The Bible tells us the judgment should start first in the house of the Lord, right? So it is time for healing. And Jesus is the only one and true healer that we need in this time for the church to be able to move on. And we cannot move on the way we are. Those that have been out of the camp. God has no respect as a person. I wanna show you something here. In um, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter seven. Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 14 tell us, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, right? We need to be 
humble. We need to stop pointing fingers at one another. We need to stop with disrespectors of persons. Right? And he said, then I will hear from heaven and heal. That's the time of healing. I will heal the land. Right? That land is you and me. Right? God is a time of healing for the church to go on. Right? We have to have a time of healing. We can't stay at this place where we at. We have to move on. Let me make, we have to move on. We cannot stay here. Right? We have to receive the presence of God in its totality to come upon us once more. You see the present, that cloud went out after he met with Moses, Miriam, and Aaron. The presence of God did not return because there was sickness, because of Miriam being sick, because of her own foolishness, right? Many has gone astray, right? Some because of their own foolishness, some because of the things that they are seeing happening amongst the church, right? All this action, all these things was happening right there in the church, right? Not outside somewhere, right there. There was disputes, there was disagreements, there was no unity right there in the church in the tabernacle. So the Lord had to intervene, right? Like the Lord intervening right now, he's exposing things right now, letting us know that it's, there is a time of healing that needs to take place right now in the church. We need to have the time of healing. And like you say, I will heal the land. The healing of the land. Only God is able to do. Right? The healing of the land. God is the one that is going to do that. And, and, and we see once the healing takes place. Right? In verse six, they said, the people journey not till Miriam was brought in. Right. Once the healing take place, verse 16 will begin to take place. You will begin to see the move of God. But we 15 verse 15 has to take place. Miriam, whomever has been outside of the camp, whoever been misplaced has to receive the time and God is not no respect as a person. And why does God concern about those who are out of the camp when we have disregarded them? They've been out of the camp for so long. We have disregarded them. We don't think they need healing. We only see in ourselves. We only being selfish. We're being prideful, but God does not see the way man sees. His thoughts is not our thoughts. His way is not our ways, right? God wanted Miriam to be healed, but there was a time. There was a process. She had to be brought back into the camp before the church was able to move. We're going to have those who's been broken who's out of the camp to come back into the camp and receive the healing for their souls. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God for that. Let me show you what's in the mind of God that you need to understand about the church, why um, we have to get there. Ephesians chapter four, it's a powerful chapter there. It tells you about the church. Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. Verse six is our key verse right there. Well, we'll start in verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Right. Jesus is the head of this church. 
right? If Jesus being the head of this church, we have to re represent him properly here on earth. The church has to represent him. His people has to represent him. And the way we've been going about this hasn't been representing the Lord, right? And verse 16 is going to give you a, a clear picture how we are going to be representing the Lord in this time that we live in it, right? How the people of God is going. Verse 16 says, for whom the whole body is fittedly joined together, right? It's fully joined together and compacted. Pay attention to that word. Compacted by which every joint supply, even those that we have disregarded, we have put out of the camp. It could have been because of their foolishness. It, because, it could have been because of heartbreak of things they had they experienced right there in the church, what they see, and it broke their heart. And they had to de be disfellowship. They couldn't be there anymore, right? So we have to get back to work, right? Being joined together, compact, and which every joint supplies. See, there's a responsibility each and every one of us have to be doing according to the affectionately working in the measure of every part, not just part, not some part, not just a pastor, right? Not just the leadership team, every member, everyone plays a part in this, right? Uh, according to the working in the measure of every part, making the increase of the body and the edifying of itself in love. Right? We all have to fulfill that command. And it can't be done by one person. We all have to be doing our parts, every part, making the increase of the body. Right? Those Miriams that's out of the camp needs to come back into the camp. They have their part. They have to play, but they have to receive that healing also. Those who are there in the camp have to receive the, the healing also, right? They have to receive the healing. What well, we have to be receiving, the, let, let's go over some stuff right here. What we, we have to receive the healing from. Verse 31 there in, in chapter four, in Ephesians. Let all bitterness, we need some healing from bitterness. What's going on right there in the tabernacle, right there in the temple wrath, all those that we have cast away, right? We disfellowship, right? For whatever reason, right? Anger, those strifes that have been there for a long time. God is the one that's going to bring the healing process. He's going to bring the healing. Calamor, calamor, evil speaking, right? Gossiping put away from you all malice, right? It's not talking about outside. This is talking about in the church, right? And this is the reflection what Jesus is expecting to see, to be, be representing him truly in this time right now. The church needs to be representing him. In verse 32, be ye kind one to another and tender. That's when the healing begins to come the time of healing, this is what it's going to bring out. Being kind one to another, tenderhearted. Our hearts need to be tenderized. Forgiving one another. Has God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. We tend to forget that. In order for us to be here, God had to forgive us of our sins. We are not going to be so judgmental. We are not going to be pointing fingers anymore. It's time for the healing process to begin. Let's go on uh, Psalms 122. Psalm 123 to make my point here. We need healing right now. 
We need healing right now in order for us to get away from um, Hazaroth, right? We need healing. Those that are out the camp need to be able to return and receive the healing and they will return. Those who've been forsaken shall return again and receive the healing. We just proved that point that every part has to work it, right? We need every part, right? To, to be able to accomplish the plan what God has for his church. He said he won't have any blemish, right? He won't have any um, spots or wrinkles. Jesus is not going to present his, his church with those things in it. They have to be removed, right? So here in verse two, um, Psalms 122, I love the way it says right here, right? When the time of the healing, now is the time of the healing. That's why David said right here, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord because the time of the healing it's taking place in the house of the Lord. Those who are out of the camp will want to come back because they recognize there is a time of healing. God is working, right? God is healing his people. His people are humbling themselves. They're seeking his face. They spend more time in prayer and fasting, right? Looking for the will of God. God will is for his church to be representing him fully on the world today, right? There is, we supposed to be a, a, a company of people that the world is able to look to, right? He say, I've called you to be the head, not the tail, the lender, not the borrower. So we can't fulfill those promises the way we are right now, right? He said, our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Here we go. Verse three, Jerusalem is built, has a city that is compacted together. Everybody hearing that? That That's uh, in, in, in here on, that is no compacting together. There is a lot of enclosures, villages, separate villages, separation. What's causing the people not to be able to move on. Come on now. Right. Verse four, whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of is to give thanks unto the Lord, right? They should be praising, worshiping there in the camp of God. But there's all other stuff that should not even be there. But the time of healing is now, right? Verse five, there are set thrones of judgment, thrones of the house of David. Verse six, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and she shall prosper that love thee. Peace, verse 7, peace within thy walls, prosperities within thy places. Right? Verse 8, for my brethren and companions' sake, I now say, peace be within thee. We need peace. And that peace is not going to come just like that. He that keep his mind on me, when the people of God are pressing, right? Then people of God need to be pressing in prayer and fasting, right? And then the peace of God, the time of healing is now, right? We have to press through prayer and fasting and seeking the will of God because this is what God wants for his people. Peace within once peace within, we will be able to give peace without, right? In verse nine, because of the house of our Lord God, I will seek that good, right? Verse eight, for my brethren and my companions sake, I will now say peace be within. For the family of God to grow, we need to come together. We need to be unified again, but we need the healing, right? I keep going back to that. Uh, I hate to be redundant, going back to that Second Chronicles 7, 14, that time of healing, which is now, 
only will take place when my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Stop all that fighting. Fight up, stop all that gossiping. Stop all that bitterness, the wrath, the anger, and humble ourselves and seek his wonderful face, his will for our lives, right? And we shall fulfill there in Psalms 125. This is what the world will begin to see. They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. That's the people of God, which cannot be moved, but abide it forever, no matter the circumstances, no matter the tribulations, the problem, uh, the disease, the sickness, right? We will not be moved, we'll be will by, the people of God will be solid. Oh, hallelujah. I hope you receive something in this message, but before we uh, close it out, I want you to see what happened to the people of God. Once everyone come along to do their part, as Miriam was, was supposed to come back in after seven days. After seven days, Miriam was supposed to come back in, All right? I want you to see right here what happened here. Once Miriam came back in, in the camp, All right? Those who are forsaken, those who, whatever reason, not in the church right now, right? When we all come together, that uni, uni, when we unify, that's the strength of the church, right? The people journey not till Muriel is brought in again. Oh, hallelujah. That is hope. Don't you get discouraged on those that left. God is going to do something, right? The healing time God is going to do. When the people begin to do what the Lord wants, he's going to cause healing to come upon the land. Miriam is going to be brought back in again. In verse 16, it's going to be a fulfillment of what's going to happen, right? Verse 16, afterwards, oh, I love that. Afterwards, the people removed from Hazroth. The people wouldn't, did not stay in closures anymore, uh, separated anymore. The people came together, compacted the way it supposed to be. Afterwards, the people removed from Hazroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. Paran in Hebrew. The meaning is beautify, adorn, glorify. It's a place of refuge. Oh my goodness. This is what we need to get to. This is what the world needs to see. His people glorify, beautify, adorn in the presence of God. The cloud of the glory to come back upon his people again. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be to God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, oh Lord God, for this time that you brought to us, God. These words of truth, oh Lord God. Have a blessed one, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen.